Uh, ciao, zdravo. Uh, I've been vlogging for a really long time. I've done more than 100 vlogs and probably and since I'm blogging since 2003, you know, I presume I will be doing this for a very long time. But today I'm planning to do the most important vlog I ever done before or I ever will in the future. Today I'm planning to share with you my way how to teach children photography as it will be a pure magic. I'm teaching photography for a very long time uh, and the most exciting, the best workshops are with kids. And you know why? Because, believe it or not, I used to be a kid with a rich imagination. Remember, the theme is how to teach children photography as it is magic, but real magic, like science-based magic. So for that, you need a darkroom, because we will do analog photography, of course. Who is doing digital photography today anyway? And plus, you know, you cannot teach anything to kids on digital photography, you know. They have their phone, they have Snapchat, forget about it, forget about it, that's not magic. Step number one is how to explain no paper. So first you need to go to darkroom and take under safe light conditions one paper out. Oh, it's the last paper. Okay, you take it out. You bring it out on the daylight. So when you bring it out, you, you bring attention that it's totally white. Then you go to the shelf, to the window. You have like two glass plates or not, but you need to have at least one. You take the white paper, you put it like this and you press it. You press it. Basically the idea is that kids have to see how this white paper is becoming dark. It's darken, darkening because of the UV light from outside. So this is, will slowly darken. So eventually this paper will get darkened and uh, we will get a silhouette, so-called photogram or even better luminous print. Luminous, is, it, is that correct, luminous? Yeah, I think it's something like that. Okay, yeah. after a while uh, our luminous print became blue and uh, since it's squeezed uh, between two glass plates we can carefully, with a nice suspension, we can open it. Do it like this. And then, let me focus. And then we remove this um, plant. And we have a nice luminous print. The point of ruining this uh, photo paper is that kids understand that where light falls, it becomes dark. Where the shadow is ca being casted, it remains bright or white. This is how they learn what negative really means. You don't want to teach them, you don't want to teach them just dry fact like white is black, black is white, you know. But in analog photography, Understanding what negative means is a pillar of everything. So do this right and do it so kids will get impressed. By the way, uh, this is still sensitive. If I would leave it on the shelf, it will just get totally black. So you want to keep it into the envelope or something like that. And then on the end, we'll just chuck into the fixer and fix it. No developer, just fixing. The next lesson is to teach children the basics of optics. Uh, the best is if you can find a, like a lab beaker like this. I don't know what's the English word for it. Somebody will leave a comment in the comments if you want to know. But in Slovenia it's called buchka. Pumpkin. <laughs> Makes sense. 
Anyway, you take an empty uh, butchka and you put it in front of the paper and all you will see is basically a shadow being casted on, um, on the paper, like a faint shadow, right? And then you ask the, uh, another kid. Ideally it would be that, you know, the paper, somebody would hold... Ideally it would be that somebody is holding a paper and that you are not making a fool of yourself. But for scientific reasons, I'm doing just that. So press like and subscribe, share and everything. Anyway, one child is holding a paper, right? Another child is holding Puchka. And then, you see, nothing is going on. And then, this child is pouring water inside. Spinning it up. There is a photo, you see? There is a photo here. Let me show a different angle. It's very important that you give them the paper and this uh, butchka in their hands and they experiment. But not only that, please do bring also a normal glass and a jar and fill them up with water so they can actually play around and they could see uh, what's the focal, focal length. So you can ask them what's the distance between having this jar filled up, uh, this jar or this butchka, you know, what's the focusing length, so the focal length of the, of the lens. Um, and, um, you know, you just give them, in, you know, go, play. It's very important to mention the best photo teacher from who I got this trick, and that's Mark Osterman from George Eastman House. So thanks, Mark, for you know inspiring me and all the rest. This is really, it's a really great trick, isn't it? After this demonstration, there is one tricky question. You look at your pockets like you are trying to continue with demonstration, but you forgot the lens. I said, "Oh my God, I forgot." Does anybody has a lens on on him or on her? And everybody said, no, you know, how the kids can have like lenses. And I said, yes, you do. Two of them. And then you do a little bit of biology. Biology. And then follows like a section on bi biology that, you know, basically the lenses have a fluid inside. You know, your, our eyes have a fluid inside. And that's why they're retracting, they're retracting, they're refracting the lenses. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Try again. And then there is this section of biology, you know, where you're explaining the eye, how the eye has a lens, and, you know, basically the eye is filled up with water, kind of, basically with water, and that is refracting the light. Interesting, isn't it? It's evening. I'll continue tomorrow, okay? A week later, I'm continuing this vlog. It's, it's ridiculous. But I have a good excuse. I was in the studio Pelican. I made some people very happy with these plates. Um, then I went to do some kayaking with Igor Widmar, my uh, fellow photographer and uh, excellent and a kayaking instructor. And then I lost my GoPro. Of course, next day I tried to retrieve it, I went, you know, to swim, I tried to dive in and then I asked my friend Hiroshima, who is uh, my childhood friend and uh, also a diver, he was just diving in Egypt and uh, I asked for his help. But more about that, how this story uh, continues and finishes in my personal vlog. Let's talk now about photography. The next stage is to explain aperture. Yeah. Like this. And since I have also very old lens from 1860s, I show them also this one and I say this is the aperture in old days, you know, they, they used it like that. Very primitive but totally suitable to do the job. You know, very important thing with teaching children photography as a magic is that they identify with them. You know, they have to find some identification. And with aperture, you know, we have two apertures. 
So what you do, you switch off the lights. Oh, I'm recording alone. This will be really difficult to record, but let me try. Okay, what you do is um, you go to a very dark place. <clears throat> you ask children to stare on each other's eyes. You, turn it. you make it very dark. You know, you, you leave them in dark for a while so the iris opens and then you turn on the lights as, as bright as you can. Oh my God. Anna, Ba, Ni, Kiri, Pit. I hope you have enjoyed this clip. Um, kids made two paper negatives. If you want to learn about paper negatives, I made a vlog for it. I really worked hard to make that vlog really good and detailed. So follow the link below. So in this vlog, we are not covering how to do a paper negative. But here it is, uh, kids made two paper negatives and now we can, we can make a positive. We have paper negative that we made and we have unexposed um, photo paper. Okay, we pressed it. This is the glossy side, you see? This is the emulsion. You know, the paper is always curling up. So this is the emulsion. You see, this is the emulsion. I mean, of course you see it because you see the picture. But, uh, you know, this is the gelatin part, it will always curl up. So, emulsion towards emulsion, together, uh, negative on top. You press it against uh, two glass plates. And now, <laughs> this is the most interesting part. Now I'll use my phone as a source of light. Two seconds, let's see what happens. It's amazing, isn't it? It's tonality wise, it's a little bit contrast, uh, contrasty. This is like, you know, very difficult to control. I mean, it's easy to control, but you know, <laughs> not really. It's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing quality. Just think about what we have done. We used a camera from 1905, like 110 years old camera, uh, that cost like 50 to 100 euros on eBay. Uh, <laughs> we use a paper negative. Uh, we developed it. Uh, we had so much fun. And uh, we create a positive image with a contact copy of, of the paper using a phone, <laughs> torch on the phone. You know, kids will love it. Of course, you know, when you do this, you will get underexposed uh, paper negative, um, a little bit better. And then, I mean, you will have to try, you know, you'll have to repeat again and again but th these are not failures you know these are you know everything you know is there are steps to a success you know kids will love this you know because you know they change the parameters they have to think you know there is nobody who can say you know five seconds 5.6 no you know you try it out it's too much it's not... just you know just f be sure to check the the vlog about paper negative you know it's very important we use this uh, large format Kodak folding brownie in which you can fit this kind of a paper but let me say that you know you can do this stuff with any kind of analog uh, camera even with this old Russian Smena sure you will have like very small uh, negative and very small positive but you know the principle is totally the same and it's plastic 
The only thing you have to uh, care is that your camera should have an option B, which is, um, you know, bulb. Meaning, you know, as long as you press, the shutter is open. The last chapter of this workshop is about the light. You ask them a question. Why do you, what do you think? Why the paper is not sensitive to red, but is sensitive to blue? And they don't know. Prob do you know? <laughs> no worry. I will not tell. <laughs> and then you give them a hint. Could you tell me the, how the colors are following in the spectrum of a rainbow from one side to the other? Another. Usually they don't know, so you show them the picture of, um, you know, on the phone of a rainbow a sky. So, you know, um, and then it's like, you know, red, um, what? Red, orange, yellow, green, and then blue. And then on the end, violet. And then you give them a hint that there is, a, have they heard about uh, ultraviolet? And of course they did. And they ha have they heard about uh, infrared? And they say, yes, they did, of course. Infrared heaters, for instance. And they say, yeah, but you know, also in the remote control, there is, a, there is a infrared light coming in. And you show them, you press, you point in their eyes and press the buttons and nothing is seen. And then you take a phone. Where's my phone? And then you take a phone and then you press the buttons, you don't see any light here, but the phone sees it. Just like this camera, you see? In this, in this, in this uh, remote control, you see the light bl blinking. But you see it because the camera is seeing it, not because of you. I mean, just come home and just look, look into, the, into, the, into the remote control, you'll see nothing. But if you open the phone and you look at through the phone, phone sees it. So, you know, it's kind of like amazing, amazing idea, you know, that what we see is very, very narrow uh, spectrum. And then you, you start talking about ultra, ultraviolet. You ask them, um, you ask them, why do they have to, why do they have to wear a sun cream on the beach? Because the light, you know, because the sun is too strong. Yeah, but what in the sun is strong, you know? And then you come slowly that that light contains a, l a huge amount of ultraviolet. And that's much, much stronger light than red. So then slowly, um, you know, they, they come to a awareness that red, red light has much less energy than blue light or green light or even more, the ultraviolet light. And... Uh, and then on the end, you tell them that there are infrared cameras that they can see through walls. You tell them that there are, uh, you know, snakes, they see infrared light. We don't see it, but snakes, they do. You know, it's just like, it's very mind-blowing when, when you think about it. Okay, that's the end. I would like to think that this is my most important vlog. Why? Because, you know, I'm pretty sure with this, technique with this principle of having this workshop I mean kids are really impressed I mean they really really understand that they're like so much more you know the like physics biology uh, chemistry everything is connected together and um, and uh, yeah and uh, kids on the elementary level they they get really impressed by thinking about you know how the, the eye is made you know and so on I hope you enjoyed this vlog Please share it, please share the love across the world. I mean, this is my way of storytelling about photography, you know. Maybe you will get inspired, maybe you'll take a part of it. Maybe, you know, that inspires you to do it on your own. Photography is amazing, you know. Photography is really a great story to tell. And it's a great medium to tell the story. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, share. If you're my Patreon, thank you so much. Uh, because of you, I can uh, I can take my time and devote it to what I really love. And uh, thank you for supporting me. If you're not my Patreon, maybe you can buy me a cup of tea every month. You know, that would be really nice. Maybe even pizza. <laughs> okay, that's it. It was a long vlog. I hope it was worth your time. Ciao.